Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 27th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. To start off, I want to talk about the three companies that make the major consoles. So that would be Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. It appears that they will all be using AMD graphic cards in their next generation consoles. This is pretty interesting considering all of the companies want to have a competitive edge over the other companies. So it seems kind of interesting that they would all be using the same company for their graphic cards. But with that said, one could be using a better graphics card than the other one. So we'll just have to wait and see. Now from here on out, I'm going to be talking about Apple and Apple related news. To start off the Apple news, I wanted to talk about 4G compatibility for the iPhone. Now it doesn't seem very likely that the iPhone will have 4G compatibility at least anytime soon. So the iPhone 5 or the iPhone 4S will most likely not have again, 4G capability. Now this is because the first generation LTE components are out right now and they are extremely big in comparison to what Apple is using in iPhones right now. And that would definitely jeopardize the size of the iPhone and it would make it significantly bigger. So Apple decided to wait until the second generation version of LTE chipsets are actually in production and that won't be until early 2012. So so if you put the two together, it seems very likely that Apple will not use 4G in the iPhone 5 or the iPhone 4S. Now there are some pictures floating around the internet of an alleged iPhone 5 that has 3D video capturing capabilities. Now this actually seems pretty fake when you look at it for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is that it says iPhone 5 on the back. Apple would never put a number after the iPhone engraving on the back and it's a different font altogether and it's even bigger than the word iPhone as well. So that alone leads me to believe that it's fake, but also when you look at one of the pictures, it has an iPhone 4 box off to the side, and it just kind of looks Photoshopped all together. But if you guys want to check it out, then be my guest. Let me know what you guys think. You can go to the post that's down below in the more info and share your input on it there. Now, iOS 5 Beta 3 was seeded to developers today, and if you guys want to get all of the changes and updates, then check down below because I have copied Apple's features and changes document for iOS 5 beta 3 because it isn't really available to the public unless you're a developer. So I have it copied down. You guys can check it out if you want. Also, iOS 5 Beta 3 can be jailbroken with the same method that was used to jailbreak iOS 5 Beta 1 and Beta 2. And I will have a link down below in the more info for a jailbreak guide on that as well. And to wrap things up, as far as iOS 5 Beta 3 goes, it looks like Apple introduced a new feature called Assistive Touch. Now, I actually made a video on this and it was unlisted for the sole purpose of being featured on my website. I wanted to discuss it in this video. Again, it's called Assistive Touch and you can enable it by going inside of settings, accessibility, and turning it on. Now some of the features for assistive touch aren't enabled right now. You can't actually enable them, but what you can do is you can bring up the menu and you can put it in any of the corners simply by moving it around. And then once you bring up that menu, you can access basically anything that you can normally do with hardware buttons. So you can use the home button for instance, you can bring up the multitasking bar by double tapping the home button icon in the menu for assistive touch. You can also go to device, you can change the screen screen orientation, you can mute it, you can change the volume up or down, you can hit shake, which right now doesn't actually do anything. So I don't exactly know why Apple included it. I was expecting it to bring up the shake to undo dialog box, but it didn't bring that up. Uh, and you can also lock it from that menu too. Now you can add custom gestures and it allows you to do other on-screen things as well that you would normally be able to do simply with your fingers like pinch to zoom. And if you're on an iPad, it will allow you to simulate four or five finger gestures as well. And it looks like Apple is trying to get people away from using hardware buttons. And eventually it looks like this could be a full replacement for hardware buttons on future iDevices. Jailbreak Me has officially passed 2 million jailbreaks served. So that is absolutely amazing. And that's basically record time. And that's probably because it is extremely easy to use in comparison to other jailbreak utilities. Apparently somebody filmed themselves jailbreaking their iPhone 4 in an airplane. So I thought that was pretty cool. And they were able to do this obviously because of in-flight Wi-Fi. And it's just something that's unique that you wouldn't really expect to be done. And finally, Apple released two new commercials for iPhone 
iPhones. So if you guys want to check them out, a link will be down below in the more info, as well as anything that I talked about in today's episode. I hope you guys liked this video. Please remember to rate it up if you did. For the question of the day, let me know down below. What do you guys think about assistive touch? And do you guys think that it will completely replace hardware buttons for future iDevices? Also, I will have a link to my Facebook page and Twitter accounts down below in the more info. Be sure to like my Facebook page and follow my Twitter accounts to be updated more often. And I will also include a link to my Google Plus profile so you guys can add me to one of your circles if you want. And if you guys want to be updated every time I release a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.